I'm for Gene Shepard, author, raconteur, and commentator of the contemporary scene. Here's Gene. <laughs> Summer go. I I don't want it to go. Come back, oh summer. The damn thing doesn't even listen. Listen to that. We are bringing you the sound of eternal time tribulation as a public service to teach you, friend, that even you can't escape from it. of mankind writhing in the river sticks of eternity. And you know, this mankind doesn't seem particularly bothered by it. No. That's right, that's right. You just blat on, you dumb fool. You just the dumb turkey just blatting on there. Sounding... That's not going to make it go away. Laughing in the face of time is not going to make it go away. <laughs> yeah, I know. You figure that you can spend your entire life in Switzerland getting repacked with silicone, huh? It will do no good. <laughs> That's right. Well, I can only tell you, friend, that when eternity creeps up on you, eternity gets the last laugh. <laughs> yeah. Laugh now. Go ahead. Summer's over, you know, no matter what you do. You can go out and, uh, you know, buy every damn piece of summer clothing down at Macy's and put it all on. It doesn't make any difference. Summer's gone, honey. <laughs> I said gone. And it won't do you any good to sit around and laugh like some simpering idiot. Simpering idiot. Listen to you. What's worse, you... I hate people that laugh with mashed potatoes in their mouth. That's really stupid. Stupidity is everywhere. Did you hear me? I said it's everywhere. <laughs> All right, dumb head. You're not going to get away with that just because you're wearing a tight dress. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can see what you mean, though. <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> Come on, what's the matter with me? I'm acting like as dumb as you are. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, cut it out. Come on. You know I'm ticklish. Now stop it i got to get to work here. I can't mess around. There's countless millions out there waiting for every golden word. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, that's what they're here for. Hell, they're not here to hear the time. You know that. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, I, can, I can sympathize with you, though. Oh, well. 
summer's over. We're going to have to... We're just going to have to... Well, uh, accept it. We're going to have to uh, attune ourselves to a new thing. It's uh, fall, right? Fall. That means uh, eight straight losses by the Jets. It means... Uh, um, let's see, what else does it mean? Uh, it means uh, Christmas is coming. I mean... <laughs> We just had Christmas. What is this? What are they? What do they want to have? A continual Christmas here? Nothing but Christmas. Already they're getting ready for the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> we just keep doing the same stuff. Potato salad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Canned shrimp. Same Christmas party year after year. <laughs> yeah, you're right. For once, you're right. You know, baby, I, I must admit it. But, uh, you know, i got to get to work. I can't fool around here. <laughs> what do you mean it ain't work? What do you think I do every night? I pour my guts out here. What do you do? You stand on the counter there and pick your teeth. Don't tell me that's work. <laughs> that's right. I don't blame you for being laughing at that one. Oh, well. I tell you, no matter where you turn, you're reminded. Summer's over. And I don't like it. I'll tell you that. I'll, I, it doesn't make any difference. I'm gonna. You know what I'm doing in my head? I am refusing to concede that summer is over. Now, if we all do it together, they say that summer and after all. Wait a minute. Now, let me let me get. To, you know, let's get to right to the point. You know, there's a theory, gang, that time is a man-made creation. I mean, you know, turtles don't know that it's two in the afternoon or nine at night or six in the morning or spring, or they don't have Father's Day turtles. They don't have any of that junk. It's only poor, sad, fat-headed men. Now, if we could stop conceding that there is time, would there be time? You know, there's an old philosophical thing there that if a tree falls here, you know that whole business. You know, I don't have to bargain you with that. You know all those philosophical conundrums, you know, those paradoxes. Or is it a paradise? Or paradis? I mean, it doesn't matter. The point is, you know all of them, so what? Why burden you with that? However, I will say this. Uh, they do say that man is the only thing that knows about time. He created it. And if he created it, he can do away with it, right? This is a fairly simple piece of logic. Isn't it? I mean, tell, isn't it? I mean, does that make sense to you? If man decides to do away with time, time itself does not exist. Because mind and man all got together and invented time. So we can uninvent it, huh? Well, don't say no. You don't know whether we can or not. No, wait a minute. Man has never made a concerted effort to do it. All right, now watch this now. Clock, I will you to stop. Start. See, if I turn it upside down, it stops. Now, I'm going to try it with the one on the wall there. Stop, clock. My God, 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 God. Oh, God. <laughs> well, hold it, hold it. Oh, that is... Uh, I'm telling you, I do not like this whole idea of summer being over. I'm just not for it. I mean, uh, summer being over means all kinds of bad things. Oh, it does. Absolutely does. Why do you think Thomas Wolfe wrote some of his most tragic chapters about the month of October? You didn't know that, so I suppose that means that it didn't happen. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. Thomas Wolfe wrote uh, some of his most uh, tragic work, dealing with the month of... Uh, tragic, ironic, uh, symbolistic, uh, uh, poetic. It was all traveling through the October of time. <laughs> the October of existence. I mean, uh, if uh, you consider your life, you know, everybody has a life, you see. And... Uh, do you consider your life an October life, or is it a June life? Or does your life trap itself deep in the heart of an eternal February with muddy, grimy snow drifts around you? Well, no, no, these, these things, uh, these things uh, must be considered from time to time. You know, I guess most of us just walk away when the discussion gets heavy like that. I mean, that's called heavy. What you do is go and get another drink. Or, uh, you know, hey, turn the record player up louder. You know, wine, women, and song. I suppose that works for some. 
but that doggone clock just keeps right on going. Did I ever tell you about the the, the uh, radio station one time? There was a radio station that used to broadcast on the 19 meter band. 1919. The 19 meter band. And, uh, you know, it was a powerful station that was in Europe somewhere. And that's shortwave. And they used to broadcast nothing but the sound of a clock ticking worldwide for hours on end. And so if you tuned around on the 19-meter band, all of a sudden, here's what you got. Just a single clock ticking away. It drove, you know, it drove the world daddy. I'm serious. That's what they did. Now, there's another station right now. There's a station that's on the air very this very night, broadcasting worldwide. And every... Ten seconds or so. There's a quiet bugle. Just goes ta ta. That's all. That goes off throughout the world. Don't ask me why they do it. That's not relevant. They do it. See, the trouble with most people today is that they're why oriented. Hence, missing the point of most things that happen. I mean, this is why guys drown. They fall in the water and they say, "Why me?" And all the while, they should be flailing around. I mean, you know, so stop the why business. That will do you no good when you're faced with eternity, friend. Why time is is not as important as time is. And these difficult uh, philosophical problems here have to be wrestled. Of course, there's two kinds of people, you see. The why time is types often wind up spending a lot of time sitting in the corner with their thumb in their mouth. The time is people spend a lot of time running around drinking and pinching girls and yelling and, uh, and you know, uh, doing it while it's there, <laughs> basically. <laughs> what am I doing here? This is gallows humor. You understand that, don't you? Gallows humor, friend. Black humor, which has always been characteristic of my type of humor anyway. I am hardly uh, Chevy Chase. Ha, ha, ho, ho, and fall off your chair with the pie-in-the-face humor, which is basically the humor of small children. <laughs> oh, no, people falling out of chairs requires no intellectual capacity to understand it. People getting hit in the mouth with a pie requires no intellectual capacity to understand that somebody's been hit in the mouth with a custard pie. But they'll laugh in the face of time and then have time laugh back at you. That requires a little intellectual understanding, if not intellectual consideration and if you listen carefully you'll hear time laughing again at you it always does it always does does. does. (laughs) listen to it you notice time is a woman eternal mysterious sullen eyed yes with the faint suggestion of a sardonic smile (laughs) yes that's right honey (laughs) that's very good (laughs) <laughs> I like that little gasp at the end, you know. It leads you to believe she's human, which is, of course, one of the bad mistakes that... I'm oh. having. Oh. <laughs> That's right. This is a mistake. Don't, uh, uh, don't, don't push your luck. Push your luck and your life will get pushed back. That's right. And luck can push you harder than you can push luck. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice idea, isn't it, huh? Very good. I said something the other day, and I want to relate it to you. So stop laughing for a minute and listen, will you? Okay. What I wanted to tell you was this. I said it, and I said it right out loud. If God had not created the New York Times book review section, man would have been forced to do it. Now, you see, that's very different from Chevy Chase. (laughs) He wouldn't understand. (laughs) There you go. Yes, time ticks on for all. Time is ticking on. Our tubes are wearing out. Right. Our unbalanced line is getting unbalanced through every minute. Right. Our preamplifiers are beginning to show signs. The attenuators are scratching and creaking. The tower howls in the wind. 
In the ancient winds of time, and a thousand years from now, they'll discover the transmitter site and wonder what manner of strange religious rites went on here, with this vast tower streaking into the sky. See? Hear that? I told you. I told you. That's what happens when you build your own stuff with your own soldering iron. Listen to that. Slowly dissolving. Oh, God. What are we going to do? The ship is sinking. The preamp is humming. We got excess grid current in the final. My God, our standing waves are all over the place. I think this microphone is radiating more than our antenna. Standing waves will do that. They call it reflected RF. That is. Good Lord, this is a terrible program. This is awful. I don't know why you subject yourself to this. Let's get back on warm, loving, familiar ground. It's exciting. No, no, this... I guess the reason that uh, you'll notice a certain skittishness on my part here tonight is because uh, this is the anniversary of one of the more traumatic days of my life. You see, traditionally, kids go back to school the day after Labor Day. Now, I went back under protest. Now, there are those who go back, oh, wowee, because many kids' lives revolve around school. My life did not revolve around school. Au contraire. My life revolved around getting out of school. That's quite right. I was not a school maven. In fact, uh, I've, always felt, <laughs> I've always felt sorry for people who are hung on school. It's like, uh, it's like laying at the bottom of a giant uh, uh, nursing hog and suckling at the teat. You know, and uh, some people, yes, I've known people who could just all their life can't get away from it. And, uh, you know, 100, 102 years old. And uh, you come, you see them, and they're saying, bright and chipper, oh, well, I don't have time to talk to you. I've got to go to class. Of course, it, it, it always makes them believe that they're eternally kids. That's part of it. Because going to class is a kid thing. Being out in the woods and hacking away at the real trees is a grown-up thing. And uh, who wants to be that? So, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, so nevertheless, as a, as a kid, I was not a school I did not look forward at all at any point in going back to school. I just have to tell you that right offhand. And it wasn't because they didn't have the right methods. You know, there's a crazy myth around. I, I keep getting letters from people who... I got a letter the other day from a lady and writes in this shaky purple ink. She says, when, when, uh, when you and I were, were young, parents were stricter. Are you kidding? Parents? I don't know about yours. But my parents didn't give a damn whether I came or went for my entire... Uh, really, I'm very serious. I, I probably grew up with the least strict parents since the first porpoise threw the first porpoisette out to the ocean to swim for itself. I mean, I, 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 I would have been astounded if my father would have said, where were you? I said, what, what do you mean? Why? What do you want to know? You want to go there too? Or uh, something like that. But I never got any of that stuff when I was a kid, never. So here I am, you know, I just... And it used to bug the hell out of me because all of a sudden there was school. Now, school is a structure. And uh, not only that, it got in the way of all the stuff I wanted to do. The stuff I wanted to do did not relate to school. For example, I wanted to build a linear amplifier for my final. <laughs> I mean, that got in the way, you know. I always was trying to put up another antenna. And when you're sitting there listening to somebody blabber on about civics, you're not going to be out there building an antenna. But other people ate that up. I mean, they sat there, their little old eyes gleaming, and their notebooks flashing in the sun, and their pencils going like hell. I mean, the note takes. I didn't take one note throughout 107 years of, of school, including college. Well, what I did, I had lived it. See, I mean, you know. So, nevertheless, here we are. I, a terrible trauma happened to me. The first, one of the first moments in high school. Absolutely, and I'm going to relate it to you. This is why I hate Labor Day. And the day after, even more. The day after Labor Day is like waking up and the party's over. As far as I'm concerned. 
because the summer was the party. The day after Labor Day, it's all over. Girls love to go back to school. I hate to tell you, it's one of the primary differences between the sexes. Girls loved it because apparently girls didn't have any party in the summer. I don't know what, what they did. Mess around. But uh, nevertheless, uh, going back to school is really a drag. And so, you know, the first day, the absolute first day I ever went to high school, I'll never forget it. It's a terrible problem. First day, it really bugged me. And it, it, uh, it made me have an even deeper distrust of school and systems. Systems, you see, that's a very loaded word, the system. Some people have a hunger for system. And actually, education is a vast system. It's systematizing knowledge. System, system. Very few, some people are so involved in the system that they never look up and see all the stuff that they're reading about is going on around them. Oh, yes. I've known people who spent nine years reading about sex. <laughs> I mean, you know, nothing's happening, but they're reading about it. So, you know, this is a problem. This is a... Uh, so there are two kinds of people. There's the ones that are out there in the weeds beating around and uh, kicking the bugs up. And then there's the others who are writing, you know, long involved uh, lists of various types of bug to be found on the various terrains of the world. And they have never really seen a real bug. So that's, this is always a battle. The guy that can actually put a resistor in an amplifier and the guy who only can read diagrams. And when confronted with an amplifier, doesn't know what the hell to do when it's got nothing but feedback and it's blowing up and the smoke's coming out of the back. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, the theoreticians have always been needed. And so have the guys with the hot soldering iron. They've been needed, too. Not, neither works well without the other. And I happen to be the hot soldering iron. Well, what does that do? Return to school. I have to return to all this jazz again. And I'm standing out in front of the school there. It's my first day in high school. And, of course, you know, there's a legend, a kind of a tradition, really, in America. The first day of school, you kind of dress up. Even today, they do that. You dress up. I mean, even if you're, even if you're dressing hip, you dress hip-hip on the first day of school. About two months later, you know... You don't worry about that anymore. I mean, uh, you, you've discovered already that all the people in your classes are dogs, and it's a dull scene, and, uh, you know, you don't worry about it. So I'm this kid, and I, I'm all dressed up. <laughs> I got, you know, the Tony Martin uh, roll collar, and uh, I had this knit tie, you see, this knit tie that my Aunt Glenn gave me for graduating from eighth grade, see. And uh, you, if you don't know anything about knit ties, I'll tell you something about knit ties. Knit ties grow faster than crabgrass. A knit tie constantly gets longer. And by the time, see, I got it when I graduated in the spring, and I had to wear this knit tie when we went visiting things and stuff. So by the time I went to school, the knit tie was eight, nine feet long. And, uh, yeah, it had a big knot on it about the size of a grapefruit. And I'm waiting to get in school. I'm standing out there in front. And they had sent me this card. It's a blue card, you know, registration card with all the classes that you were in. And I was already registered as a freshman. And there it said my name right there, clearly. Shepherd, Gene, comma, room 220. And then it said uh, HM dot RM dot homeroom. See, even I could figure that out. That's pretty good, isn't it? So uh, it had all these little classes. It said first period. So it was actually one P-E-R period, you know. First, second period, third period. And then it said L-N-C-H, right? And then it said uh, fifth period. See, I had fourth period lunch. Little did I realize already I'm deep in the slums of the school that, uh, that the really hip people had a different period of lunch. I had the uh, fourth period of lunch where all the, uh, you know, the people with the bad skin and the thick glasses and all that, they were all out to lunch. And all I had left was, uh, you know, stuff like chipped beef. I never ate, by the way, at the school cafeteria. Never once, even from the first day. No, that was, that's, certain people always have 
little things. They, they carry little purses with money, and they go down to the cafe. Yeah, it's a whole different kind of kid. Not me. So uh, here it is. You know, I'm looking at this, this card, and it's everything is lined up there nicely. All eight periods. We had eight periods, incidentally. And uh, just like everybody else, and it had a lot of little print on the side, you know, like school board uh, stuff and a uh, little blue card. And at the bottom it says, uh, uh, enrolling freshman will present this card to homeroom teacher at the beginning of the first period of homeroom on the first day. So I, you know, I got the card, I'm all set. And I don't know anybody at this crowd. There's such a vast throng out in front of the school. I didn't see Schwartz or Flick or any of those guys. They, I was by myself the first day that I was really truly on my own because you, you know when you're with your friends you're not really on your own and here I am truly on my own so the bell rang had this bell went, ah! you know that kind and uh, everybody charged into the school and up they went and uh, first five minutes I'm sitting in the home room there and Miss Snyder sitting up in front there and she's got all the blue cards and the seniors are in there and the, Juniors were in there. There's all kinds of people in there, you know, guys with letters on them, big H's and birds and stuff all over them, and stars, fantastic looking girls. And they were grown up, you know, I couldn't figure it. I'm sitting back there, finally the homeroom period is over. <clears throat> it goes, and I rush off to the first class. The first class was S M N G period. Swimming. So you don't have that. We were a civilized school. Your swimming was a requirement in our school. You could not get out until you could swim. Not physical ed, swimming. So it says S-M-N-G. It said swimming, and then in parentheses it said A pool. We had A and B. So I rushed down to the A pool down on the bottom of the school in the basement where the gym was and the track and all that stuff. And at one end of the school was the A pool, the other end was the B pool. So I rushed to the A pool and I ran in, you could smell the swimming, you know, you could smell the chlorine and all that stuff, and I ran in there with my card, and I went in, there were swinging doors, I went in through the swinging doors, went in through the next doors, and as I went through the next doors, there was this, ah, there was a scream. There was a thousand girls in there, in various stages of undress. And this lady with the short hair and the uh, well-cropped mustache came running over to me. She said, what do you want here? here what, what are you doing here? I said, here, I'm, I'm, uh, I had her my card. And she says, what are you, what are you doing here? You're uh, Shepherd Jean P. J-E-A-N. Why, uh, you're a girl. I said, no, I'm not a girl. No, no. Oh, no. No way. And at that point, I realized that the system was already falling down. And I've had a deep trist, distrust of things that are typed and come out on little cards with little holes and little little uh, computer markings all over them. And by the way, it took me three weeks to get out of that class because it was the system. They had a... <laughs> you don't know, just go down there and then walk down the other end and go into the bee pool. Not at all. They had enrolled three people down there named Dolores. They were having the same problem. So I, every day I'd sit out in front of the girls' pool for 55 minutes and read QST and <laughs> bell would ring and I'd go my way. And uh, at that point I began to realize there was something somewhere in the wood pile. I wasn't quite able to pinpoint it and I have never yet been able to pinpoint it. But there's something lurking in the wood pile. Yes, the day after Labor Day. A day of evil portent of one which will live in infamy. Time ticks on. Ticks on. An area of something will ever change to something that's been written on the wall with something. And your hollow, your hollow, idle laughter will ne'er change. The word of it. Summer is gone. Gone forever. Gone, gone, gone. <laughs> you know, to quote, to quote Jackie Gleason, 
One more time, right in the mouth. <laughs> right in the beak, baby. You're pushing it.